there'll be a lot of people that know who Lieutenant Colonel Ed, Ed Beckham is, no doubt about that, that are listening to the podcast, but there'll be a lot of people that have no idea who you are. And so who is Ed Beckham? Where are you from? Tell us a little bit about your background. Well, I, uh, I was born in San Antonio at uh, Fort Sam Houston, the hospital down there in 1943. They, uh, they have a plaque on the room that I was born in, okay? And in <laughs> memory of me, it's a, it's, broom, it's a broom closet, okay? <laughs> the Edwin A. Uh, Beckham broom closet. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I, uh, I've lived, my dad, your grandfather was uh, uh, in the military, so we moved around an awful lot. I spent a couple, couple of times in San Antonio, uh, went to uh, South Carolina, went to Waco, uh, spent a year, my last year and a half of high school over in Anchorage, Turkey. And uh, I uh, had a, just kind of moved around like any, any, any military brat would, okay? And uh, I, uh, somebody said something one time about, well, you know, you need to give your kids some stability. Well, I agree totally with that, but, your stability is your family, okay? That's your stability. It doesn't make any difference where you're living. And I thought that was pretty good, uh, pretty good wisdom, pretty good information. But anyway, I've uh, I played a lot of sports and uh, pretty good high school football player. And let's, let's talk. Get- let's talk about that for a second because I think you're you're being a little uh, humble about that. I mean, you weren't you an all state uh, high school football player at Waco High School when you were a junior? Well, I wasn't uh, I, I wasn't an all stater, but we moved we moved to w- to Waco when I started my ninth grade year at junior high school. Okay, yeah, and we moved from South Carolina. I had a South Carolina accent, and I wore a pair of slacks to school the first day. <laughs> and all these Texas boys, I mean, they gave me so much trouble; it was unbelievable. Okay, yeah, I, I said, "Do you guys have a football team here?" Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> are you going to come out? I said, "Yeah, I'm coming out." Yeah. So I that afternoon and I nearly died. Okay. <laughs> I, stood, I stood with it. The first scrimmage we had, I was playing second string center. Okay. Yeah. And I hit the first string center so hard <laughs> that he never got the ball to the quarterback. Short story long as the coach said switch. So anyway, that nice. sort of, that sort of was the defining point And uh, I was accepted after that. And we had 11 guys off of that junior high school team that ended up playing college football wow nice and and you were you were back then i mean you were six two six two and a half two hundred roughly two hundred pounds pretty big guy no i was 153 pounds (laughs) (laughs) but but uh anyway then i then i played a little uh i went out for the the uh the the high school team they bust all of us freshmen that were going to be sophomores in high school it bust us over to to the high school I worked out I had a apparently a pretty good uh pretty good spring training because I was one of the four guys they put on the varsity of sophomores nice and the coach came up and told me something uh, he said you know I talked to your junior high school coach and he said uh you 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 you, you, you what did he say you'd rather fight than uh anyway he thought out you know pretty tenacious but I never looked at it that way but anyway uh so I ended up playing varsity football as a uh, as a sophomore, and believe it or not, I started. Uh, I had a couple of pretty good games, and I played as a junior. I was uh, at Waco High School, and then I moved overseas halfway through my junior year, so I didn't get to play my senior year. Talk talk about that a little bit, because literally you are you're in the middle of your junior year in high school. You're you're a very, very good athlete. I, I assume you had plenty of friends and all of a sudden out of nowhere, you get uprooted and you got to go to Ankara, Turkey in, in the Middle East of all places. So what what was going through your mind? What was it like as a young kid getting uprooted in the middle of your junior year and moving overseas? Uh, it was not something that I wanted to do. I was, I, I really would have preferred to stay there in Waco, but bottom line is this, I didn't fight it. I went over, we had a basketball team. We went to Rome twice. We won the championship, uh, Mediterranean area, high school basketball championship, my senior year. Nice. Uh, we played soccer against the Turks. Yeah. We were so bad. <laughs> 
that we could never score a goal. Yeah. So on one day, one game, the Turks said, okay, this is what we're going to do. We're never going to take the ball down the field. We're going to let you guys set up about 20, 20 yards from, from, from our goal, you know, and until you finally kick one in. <laughs> well, that was good. But, they, you know, kids at that age, all they're interested in is getting back to the States, okay? Yeah. And uh, I, uh, I had some great experiences. I was in the water, uh, the, the underground water system of Jerusalem on Christmas Day of 1961. Nice. What me, were you doing me, there? Me and, we, me and one of my uh, uh, buddies met up with two Arab boys. Really? And uh, yeah, Muslims through and through. Okay, here we are, two Christians, two Muslims. They said, do you want to go down in the underwater uh, water system? And I said, sure. <laughs> And I mean, we went through that whole dead young thing. We came back up, everybody hugged and everybody left. It's a good example of how people can get along. Okay. Sure. Sure. Totally different cultures. Yeah. They treat us like gold. Yeah. And we treated them like gold. No problems. But we got to see a lot of things like that. So that was, you know, it made it, 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 it was good. And I came back uh, after my, uh, about halfway through the summer after I graduated from high school and, uh, I rode a bus all the way from New Jersey to Waco, Texas. And I ran out of money about in Mississippi, okay? <laughs> and it was, this bus stopped at every place you could possibly stop. <laughs> this, this guy gets on the bus in Mississippi. We're having a good conversation, you know, and it's a 48-hour trip or something. But anyway, uh, after about a day or so, I'm starving to death. I am so hungry that I can't breathe. <laughs> this guy... We stopped at this place. This guy said, I'm going to go get something to eat. So he goes and he gets the largest burger you can possibly ever find, okay, with a large order of fries and eats it in front of me. I'm, I'm drooling. I mean, it's horrible. <laughs> so anyway, we finally get to Waco, and I uh, get with the family that I stayed for a month before I went down to A&M. But it was, uh, it was a good experience. Uh, my parents wanted to do it for me, and uh, I have no – no regrets whatsoever. It kind of cut me out as far as scholarships and football goes, but I did have a couple of offers anyway. One of them from uh, uh, Colorado State. I think even UT may have offered me one, but uh, they were giving them to everybody at that time to keep everybody else. So uh, I was hoping to be either a one-year scholarship or an A&M or a walk-on. And that's kind of what happened. But um, So you left as a high school senior. You left Ankara, Turkey by yourself, flew on a plane to back to the States, New Jersey, and then took a bus to Waco and stayed with a family for a month until you went to A&M. When when was, after you left Ankara after your senior year and went off to college, when was the next time you saw your folks? Uh, I saw them the next, I guess the next summer. Okay. They, They were coming. I didn't see them for a year. And I had some grandparents and some friends that I stayed with over the holidays, wasn't a big deal. And uh, I was I was pretty independent at that time. I yeah. mean, it was, wasn't a big, big, big deal, okay? Yeah. I didn't have any problems. I mean, you know, you get a little lonely at times and stuff like that, but basically I, uh, I, I knew a few people, so it, was, it wasn't too bad, but I didn't have to have anybody wash my clothes for me, okay? Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I, I could take care of myself, but. And I, and I uh, a lot of that I attribute to my parents making me, teaching me a few things that you ought to know before you leave home. 